the shrink wrap modifier. What is it exactly and what makes it so useful with Blender and 3D in general? Well, let me show you. So the first thing I want to kind of explain is what is the shrink wrap modifier and how does it work? So its only job is to project vertices from one mesh onto another. Now, for example, if I take this cube, it's obviously the simplest example, and I go in edit mode, you can see um, it's projected onto the wired cube right over here. So this here. And so I added the shrink wrap modifier. Now, if I go in edit mode while the target is the other cube, and I want to edit this cube here, you see it doesn't work. It reprojects all the vertices onto the base mesh or the target of the shrink wrap. Now for the rest of the video, I will um, call it a base mesh or a guide mesh. And this is how they're referred to usually. So you can see that if I turn off the shrink wrap modifier, the vertices are exactly where they are, where they should be. But if I turn it on, they go back to the shrink wrap cube. And now, but before maybe you saw that when I moved the cube, the other one was kind of disappearing. Well, it's not actually disappearing. It's just reprojecting onto the cube. And now, obviously with this simple example, it's not that useful. And you may wonder like, what's the big deal? Why would someone want to use that? And the big reason, or at least for me, the big use case is for cars, vehicles, or anything hard surface that has a lot of details. Some of the main advantages of using a shrink wrap modifier is that you preserve your surface quality when you add details. Now, for cars, for example, it's probably the most important um, kind of factor when you're modeling. It's to preserve that surface, that you want that to be super smooth or preserve the shapes that you created. And with polygonal modeling, one of the issues that you often encounter, for example, if I want to add a door handle over here, and I'm starting to inset faces, then I want to, for example, remove that, and now I need a sharp corner, so let's say I had the loop cut here. Well, in this case, it didn't create that big of an issue, but if I go maybe in the matcap with the reflections, okay, let's say I, I played a little bit more and I exag exaggerate that, but let's say the surface is a bit deformed because I moved them because I, I was designing, because I was kind of expressing my creativity. Now, you can see that we have a little pinching here. And this is a big deal, like this is really causing problems. So let's say I remove that and we set up a shrink wrap. So I'll just reconstruct this surface really quickly. And now if I take this, duplicate it. Now let's rename this one panels, for example because it's going to be the final panel. The base mesh here, I'm going to, we can keep the subdivision count to where it's at, but I will prefer to increase it because when we add geometry to our final panels, the more geometry that they have to kind of project themselves onto, the better. Like it will give us a bit smoother reflections and in some case it can help. So I'll just crank that up to four. Usually what I recommend is two levels higher than your final panels, but it's really just a rule of thumb. You can always come back later and increase or decrease it as needed. Now with my panel select, selected, sorry, I'll just go here. You can add a shrink wrap modifier under the, under the deform tab. But now I'll select target and go click on my base mesh. And now nothing happened. And that's perfectly normal. Just as with, just as with the cube, we're just reprojecting onto the other mesh. And because we didn't do any changes to this one or to the other one, nothing appears. But now, if I were to inset those faces again, cut that out, and let's say by accident I move that up, you can see, yes, of course, the hole will be deformed, but that's just because this one is getting reprojected a bit straighter, but it keeps the surface. The surface is still perfect. Well, if I turn it off, this is really bad. And you don't want that, but the shrink wrap preserves it. This is the main use for shrink wrap, but I'm going to show you a little bit more on how to use it.
Before we do that though, let me show you how I make my base mesh, or at least how should a base mesh look like before you go on to make your final panels. So for me, the ideal scenario is a bit like this one, where I have all the main features of the mesh, all of the main panel kind of details and main characteristics, but still without any um, details. So for example, you see no holes for the door handles, obviously. Uh, let me just bring back the actual base mesh. And for example, no rear windows, because if I were to fit it in, um, now I would get to match the numbers of loop cuts on the roof and on a trunk. But by leaving a hole like this, it's very, <clears throat> sorry, it's very easy to kind of get away with maybe more loops on the trunk area and more on the roof. So you just want to kind of have a shell of your all of your panels. Um, for example, here the plane. Obviously, I deleted the the other part. It was a complete plane before. But if I go over here and show you the base mesh, you can see it's just a shell without even the cockpit because the cockpit would have been more complex and kind of forced me to add more loop cuts to this area. If I go back to material. So another kind of uh, base mesh that could happen is with this one, which is for a Kia EV9. And it's a relatively simple model, but for the front, it would have required a lot more geometry. I'm going to put an image of the actual vehicle. So I just placed a simple surface here and then I cut out, I cut out a hole later on. So this is how a base mesh should look like. Relatively simple, no details. Okay, so now if we go over the cube, for example, so I can show you a bit more of the settings of the shrink wrap modifier, you can see that we have a vertex group. And what this does is kind of tells Blender which vertices we want to project and which ones we want to kind of keep independent. And so if I go ahead and create a new vertex group and apply it over here, you can see that it's the same thing as if the modifier was turned off, because by default, no vertices are assigned to that group. But if we go ahead in edit mode and then go over here and press assign, now all of them have this value of one, so they're pre being projected onto the shrink wrap modifier. And now you it may think this is a bit of a silly use case, but it's actually very useful in some scenarios. And I pushed this to an extreme, I think one or two years ago, when I created those seats with various shrink wrap modifiers to kind of create the offsets of all the padding and everything while keeping kind of the, the same shape of the seat. Now I'm not recommending uh, to do this as an extreme, uh, this as extreme as I did, but I'm going to show you what the vertex groups looked like for this one. So you can see in the red, it's one, it's a value of one. So it's kind of getting 100% projected to that group. And in blue, it's a value of zero. So for the padding, I had an offset that would control kind of how much it would go over. Um, you see this one for this, the stitches and various ones for all kind of folds and everything in the fabric. But let me show you more practical examples where vertex groups can become very useful without going into vertex painting, just applying a value of one or zero like we did with the cube. For example, here, let's take the cockpit and let's take actually those three parts. So the base mesh, the cockpit and the window. Now you can see that the window has an offset compared to kind of the frame of the cockpit, but it's still projected. Like I can't move it outside. And how we created this is with another setting of the shrink wrap modifier. If we go down here, you can see that I have two modifiers. So one of them is on surface and has an offset of zero millimeters. Now the other one, on the other hand, has a different vertex group than this one, has an offset of minus 10 millimeters and is set to outside surface. Now you can play with, uh, for example, inside, outside, above surface. I found out that outside surface is the best one for creating offsets, no matter if you want them to be kind of inside of your base mesh or outside. 
like in this case, it's a negative offset and it works perfectly with outside surface. But let me show you what the vertex groups look like. So if I go in edit mode, and let me go here, if I select the offset, you can see that everything is assigned to that vertex group. And now if I remove everything, you can see that we get it only on the surface. Now, would you need two vertex groups in this case? No. Let me kind of turn off the first shrink wrap modifier and the result would be the same because all of the vertices are assigned to that group, to the same shrink wrap modifier. But for example, for the frame, you can see that we still have two modifiers and same settings basically, although we could go, for example, with a positive offset. And in this case, it's a little bit jagged, but we could fix it by just sliding that. Don't worry. But you can see that only part of my mesh is getting the offset, while the rest still gets projected onto the regular base mesh, so to speak, the cockpit that you see here. So if I go in edit mode, select, for example, the vertices that are offsetted, only this loop, and this is how you get offsets like these. So this is a really useful method with shrink wrap because once you created the base mesh, you can basically add as many de details as you want super easily. For example, I can just add a hole over here, create that, and you can even do something that you would not ever kind of dream of doing usually with the subdivision surface, and it's using booleans. Now, I'm not going to show you this uh, because it's it works just as a regular boolean, but now you can use booleans which subdivision surface and you still get the surface perfect. Um, you get a lot less glitches and little artifacts. Now, if I move on to the front of the plane, you can see that those little indentations, they're made using the exact same technique. Just, you can see the mesh, the actual mesh passes over, but because this one is assigned to this group, that is assigned to a second shrink wrap modifier, just like this, basically just like the other one we had, well, it projects it at a distance, at, a, at an offset, sorry. And one other advantage that we have is that we can tweak the distance really easily. And it affects every single part. But just like that, this is a very useful technique. And now you can see that, for example, to create panel gaps, you can actually just mark sharp edges with the... Um, sorry, where is it? With the edge split modifier and then with a bevel modifier later on to kind of create just it, this tiny bevel over here. But yeah, this is just one use case of the shrink wrap modifier. And that's it. That covers basically how to use the shrink wrap modifier, how to create your base mesh, um, what it should look like. Maybe one thing I may add is some people may find it scary when they're downloading, for example, a car off of Blender Kit. If I go, for example, you know, this one has a base mesh. For example, if I download my car, you will see that it has the base mesh visible here. And this is why you kind of see a duplicate mesh. But what you need to do is simply hide it when you want to work in the viewport for it. Or you can just select everything, the base mesh included, and then you can move it around. Because if you only try to move it oops, after hiding all the base mesh, you'll see that you get issues. Okay, not in this case, because I parented the base mesh to the actual panels. But um, basically how to use a car or any other object with a base mesh, and you want to move it around, make sure that your base mesh is parented to an, uh, an empty object or something like that. And before deleting your base mesh, make sure that you apply all the modifiers to your panels. So for example, this panel that you can see here, let me just switch over to that. You can see it's quite a complex panel. And let's see what it looks like if I remove the base mesh. You can see very deformed in some areas, um, like especially here, like that would be very bad without a base mesh. 
So before deleting that, the base mesh, sorry, you want to apply the modifiers. Not, the, not necessarily the solidify, but at least everything that comes before the shrink wrap. Okay, so that basically covers everything you need to know about the, the shrink wrap modifier and kind of all of its quirks and features and everything that you can use uh, for your models. If you have any questions, don't hesitate, let me know. Um, it can be here in the comments or on Discord. This particular question, or at least this particular video idea came from Discord. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.